relationships between the laughs of kids with autism and typically developing kids um, and what what significance does that have to treatment and how does that uh, what what is laughter generally all about anyway so that first study that where there was kind of a lot of interest that was we did a study where we looked at differences we kind of recorded kids um, half of them had autism and there were two other control groups that were individually matched with those kids we had them do this standardized play sequence and then we recorded the laugh production and what we found was we kind of extracted all the laughs and, and analyzed acoustically what they looked like what we found was that the kids with autism produce pretty much only one kind of laugh whereas typically developing kids produce different kinds and the main difference is what we call voicing so in a prototype laugh like one we'd think, you know, just when, when you think of a laugh, what comes to your mind is that that laugh that we produce, we're using our vocal cords to produce it, just like I'm talking right now and I'm using my vocal cords. Um, another kind of laugh that we do in, a, in adults, about half of the laughs that we do are called unvoiced laughs. So this would be things like a snort, like a <laughs> or a shh, shh, stuff like that. So I'm not using my vocal cords to produce it. Um, as it turns out, the kids with autism produce 98% of voice laughter, at least in the, between 8 to 10 whereas typically developing kids produce about 40% or so in that same age range. And so the way it makes sense of that is um, we have data showing that people have a strong preference for listening to voice laughs as in comparison with unvoiced laughs. So if I, like in our conversation right now, I, if I say something dumb, you might kind of... Thank you. Exactly. And you don't really feel good inside, but you've learned to sort of grease the social wheels in this context you know, make me feel good or whatever. Whereas um, with kids with autism, I don't think that they're probably picking up on those subtle social cues. So it's probably more, the kinds of laughs that they're producing are probably more heartfelt and that they're genuine. So they just laugh when they feel good. And, and those are the kind of laughs that people really like to hear, as it turns out. Kids are producing these sounds that people really like to hear and that may actually influence others positively. And that if we could find some way to harness them, and other kinds of signals like that, we could actually um, promote relationships with other people.